And okay, how's everybody doing today? Hey, how are you? All right, how you doing, Great. Latoya? We're finally on. All right, sorry guys, sorry about the <laughs> technical difficulties. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. And I am here with uh, Ernest and Latoya of the Profit Room. Now you've heard me talk about the Profit Room uh, before. You listen to some of our podcasts. You see some of our Facebook Live broadcasts. You've heard me talk about the Profit Room. And today we're going to deal with the importance of learning how the financial markets work for African Americans, and then also uh, learn how um, a lot of these different policies that we hear coming out of the White House how this impacts uh, the economy, how this impacts how much money you have in your pocket, okay? When we tell you, know, while we were setting things up, I was talking to Ernest about these tariffs that Trump uh, has put on products coming from uh, China. And it seems like Trump does not understand how tariffs work. <laughs> All right, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, so, so how's everybody doing today? Uh, Ernest and Latoya, how y'all doing today? We're good. We're good. Super. Can't complain. No complaints. Thank you for having us on. Okay. No problem. No problem. And uh, once again, sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, okay. So, uh, Ernest, we've had you on before, but uh, introduce mm -hmm. yourself to everybody, then, then Latoya. Well, let's do this. Let's do ladies first, okay? Latoya, why don't you okay. introduce yourself first, and then we'll come to Ernest. Go ahead, Latoya. Hi, everyone. I'm LaToya. I am from Boston, Massachusetts, and I am a professional day trader. Also one of the co-founders of The Profit Room, which is a stock market trading and educational site yes. where we like to teach people how to trade as well as invest in the various financial markets, such as stocks, options, futures, as well as Forex. Okay, excellent. Excellent. And then, um, uh, Ernest, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, Ernest, I'm one of the uh, co-founders as well. We have the ProfitRoom.com, full service. Uh, uh, our primary is education in the financial markets. Like Atoya said, we keep risk management as our priority. Also with uh, uh, understanding the financial markets and social and economic consciousness in order for us to be able to create wealth in the present and also create wealth for generations to come so that's our goal here at the profit room okay excellent and uh, we've had um ernest on before had him on last month and then also check out the article from blacknews.com uh about about the profit room as well we'll post a link here uh for that also okay so um ernest tell us um why is it important? What is the importance uh, for African Americans to learn how the financial markets work? How does this how does this impact us when people are trying to make it from you know a lot of African Americans you know they're trying to make it from the first of the month to the end of the month? Okay, correct, <laughs> so, correct, so, correct. So why is this important? So the the reason why it's important is it's just like anything we look at. We may not be a part of the financial uh, world but we're, we're in it by default. Everything okay. that we do surrounds the financial markets. And that's why we need to be conscious of what's going on because it affects us. Like we was talking about earlier with right. uh, the Tataris, the soybean farmers and uh, so much other things that, that happen with stuff that we purchase on a day-to-day on -day basis. And if we're blinded to the reality of what's going on, Mm -hmm. We start blaming our employers. We start blaming those who don't need to be blamed. In reality, we need to be blaming ourselves because we could have seen or foreseen this coming. Or number two, be prepared for this to come. That's one right. of the things that we got to make sure that we always do. That's why it's important to understand what's going on in the financial markets. Exactly, exactly. And I'm, I'm pulling up an article here dealing with, well, I have a few of them pulled up, but I'm mm -hmm. pulling up another one. Um, it could be because this was announced yesterday. So I live in Detroit and uh, Ford Motor Company announces thousands of workers uh, to be laid off. Uh, it's the first of a wave of Ford layoffs 
in the U.S. that is expected to hit 800 uh, people by the end of June and 7,000 worldwide by the end of August. Uh, now this is from NBCNews.com, and then I'll come to you in just a minute, Latoya. But uh, if we look at the article, I wanted to uh, go to what it was saying about tariffs. Uh, Ford's move comes as the U.S. auto industry finds itself united in opposition to Donald Trump. I don't like to call him president. Donald Trump uh, to Donald Trump's threats to impose tariffs on cars and car parts imported from the European Union and Japan. Okay, so. Uh, Latoya, explain to people, because see, elections have consequences, one. I'm not trying to make this political, okay? But number one, elections have consequences. Two, politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. So explain to people how tariffs imposed on uh, products coming from China or being exported from the U.S. to the Chinese, and then tariffs on uh, cars and car parts imported from the European Union and Japan. How does that impact Black people trying to make it from first of the month to the end of the month? It is a, it's a large impact when you yes. actually put everything into perspective. And the thing is, we can't erase the past. We can't erase the elections, unfortunately. I know so <laughs> many of us would love to. Right. All we can do is not, I don't want to say hope for the best, mm -hmm. but make an impact by doing what's necessary so this does not continue to happen in the future. You know, we don't want to go through this for another term, especially right. with um, who's currently head of state. But this right. impact us major impact everyone across the board that's the stuff that's being imported you have to think about where especially if you're a consumer and we know a lot of people within our community unfortunately that's why we're trying to change that narrative right out of being a consumer now become an investor instead so we know a lot of people consume and when you think about products especially footwear things we wear the nikes and all of that stuff is going to cost much more at the end when it's all said and done, especially when the majority of companies like Nike, for example, Walmart and whatever other shoemaker, yes. most of their manufacturing company or places are actually in China. Yes. So that, that has a direct <laughs> impact on, on consumers. And at the end of the day, it's not like the companies are going to swallow the loss. Never that. Mm -hmm. They always pass it on to who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> always. They will never lose. Right. So you have to be able to counteract that somehow. And the best way to do that is through investing. Because we know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Trump acts like China is being charged for the tariffs. No. It's right. like, no, American companies are being yeah. charged and they pass that uh charge on to consumers okay yeah. go, uh, go ahead Ernest. yeah and uh, back to what like latoya was just saying too is something that comes out economic report is cpi consumer price index consumer price how index much, right yes yeah, how much americans are paying for uh items then is uh producer price index mm -hmm. so going to what you said you have these auto parts that's coming from China to Ford, at the same time, they're going to pass over the cost to us, the consumer. Right. But at the same time, like we're saying, being social wake economics, Ford has been trying to get its price into the teens already. I bought Ford back in the crash at like a dollar, and I think it went up the most to like $13, $14. Now, Ford is around $10 a share now. Okay. For a long time, they've been trying to boost that price up for investors. Mm -hmm. So this is good news for investors because they're going to save about a couple billion dollars, right? right. And it's going to help push that stock price higher. So when you hear that news, we're shocked because we know a lot of people in our community may be working for Ford or taking care of that. And this is another leeway when you're dealing with the unions and when you're dealing with labor laws to take stuff from China and use that on uh, 
the on the table, the negotiation table. You okay. know, it's easier for you to push that. So even though it's not uh, China's fault, right? But this is helping big companies like Ford ease their way into doing stuff, right? To get their mission accomplished to satisfy the investor. So it depends on which side of the tree you want. You could be at the top as an investor or you could be at the bottom as an employee. And so, that's so, where- Yeah, so the move you're talking about by Ford is by laying off uh, 7,000, these are white collar workers, 7,000 white collar workers world, wa worldwide. That's what you're talking about. Correct. They oh. automatically in the past few years been trying to restructure Ford. Yes. In order That's to make it profitable, no matter what. Right. So it's just almost with this China thing, it's like, all right, let's strike now. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Let's strike now, even though they will be affected. But you see how it's easier for them to put it on China and take the light off of them as an individual company. So this tariff stuff is affecting both sides, us as consumers of products and also us our people as employees, you know, legacy employees that might have been there 20 years, management, supervisors, and things of that nature. Right. And so, just, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. No, 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 go ahead. I'm all right. And, I'm, and I'm, just for the point of clarification, um, when they were referring to tariffs in this article from NBC News, they were referring to um, Ford's opposition to Donald Trump's threats to impose tariffs on cars and car parts imported from the European Union and, and Japan. But in this article, it, it did not mention China. It did not mention the tariffs from China. Okay, and, got you. So, just, so I just want to make that gotcha, clear. Oh, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and once again, uh, the name of this article, people can go read this for themselves, from N NBCnews.com, Ford Motor Company announces thousands of workers to be laid off. This is from... Uh, uh, May 20th, 2019. So people can go check this out. Okay. Uh, so uh, very quickly, and either one of you can fill this question, explain to people how do tariffs work? Because Trump acts like uh, China is paying the U.S. government this extra money. Okay. Explain to people how do tariffs work? Whoever wants to handle that. So when you look at how the tariffs work, it's all agreements that you have. Okay. And for importing and exporting, like let's give an example. Uh, for instance, China needs our soybean, right? Yes. They need it. Yeah. We we export about sixty percent mm -hmm. of soybean. That's right. about fourteen million dollars a year to China. The reason why China has the world's largest population of pigs. We export mm -hmm. more pork here. So they have to feed the pigs, number one. Export pork from China. Yeah, we export, yeah. yeah. Like, so they have, they need the soy to feed the pigs. Mm -hmm. They also need the soybean for just human consumption. Right. Over there, because they don't have as much land as we have. You know how I many people they got in China, right? Mm -hmm. So those tariffs, right? When we exchange back and forth goods, it's just negotiations where it's just like a tax. So the government could get a piece of theirs. That's it. So what happens if you start charging more, but it's just like a fighting match, China can go to Brazil. Like Brazil has already been importing soybean. That's their backup plan anyway. Yeah. To take more more soybean from there. By so more it's just the soybean from Brazil, yes. Correct. It's just a fact of import and exporting, just the same way we import still from uh, Canada, right? It's mm -hmm. just a way of the United States exporting their products to different countries and getting paid for it. It's just a relationship that you have. But when you have this boxing match that you want to charge more because of this and because of that, right? It affects the individual farmer. It affects the, the steel worker or whoever's having those particular items. It's going to affect like home builders, when we talked about, if you're going to get aluminum siding a couple right. of months ago, you're going to get a new granite countertop. All that stuff costs even more because the in order for it to cross our soil and onto our land, you have to pay 
those tariffs to the government. It's just like a tax yeah. that you have to pay. So, yeah. and the government makes money off of that. They make money off of that. But now they're already making money off our individual taxes that we pay here and other forms of income that they make. But this is just something that keeps the global trade working no matter what throughout the country, no matter what. But this disrupting of it is more than just the tariffs. It's like it's just a fighting match. And like we said, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't affect the whole global economy. That's like, you know, Warren Buffett losing a uh, billion dollars. It's like us losing a hundred. It's not really going to affect them that much. But the the delay that's going on with the soybean workers right now. So for instance, soybean has been the lowest. We track that all the time. It's been around $26 a barrel, okay. right? Now that's very, very low. And they're coming up on a 2019 crop, right? They still got crops from 2018. So when they sell, they're automatically going to sell at a loss. They're automatically going to sell at a loss. That's the because they is so we have so much product because right. China supply will buy and demand it. increase supply it, lowers the price exactly yeah it yep. lowers the price so we if we export sixty percent that's money at the same time that the U S is not getting the farmers is not getting but the the U S is getting money from so many other places they're not going to feel that hit only the local farmers. Now, when you say they're not going to feel that hit, who is the they? I'm talking about the United States government itself. The government oh, is yeah. not going to is not going to feel that hit right. because they're so diverse. You know, they're so diverse. So the point of tariff is just trade back and forth. This is your like um, payment for this, your payment for that. Pay like every country has something that a another country needs, and the reason why China will be paying for the soybean because they don't have land like we do. They don't have the amount of aerial land to create in order to make soybean farms. And they consume, look at their, their culture. They consume right. much more rice products than we do. They right. feed that to their pigs. So you look at America, we don't need that much, but mm -hmm. we got a buyer for it. So that's why they the, um, the money goes over there. So, you know, it's just an interchange of making money. That's how it works. But once you got big brother in between it, it could just throw it all off. Right. It's an imbalance now. So, so Latoya, what are, uh, if we look at, for instance, Latoya, I'm going to bring you back in this conversation here. If we look at, uh, for instance, a recent article from NBCnews.com from May 15th, 2019, school supplies, smartphones, and diapers, what to buy now before new tariffs hit. And they're talking about uh, the expanded uh, $200 billion in tariffs Trump was going to put on Chinese goods. And uh, I think that either already hit or is coming. Is that, wh which one is it? Is, is it it's, it already It's supposed to be effective in June, I believe. So it's coming. Yeah, right, it's coming. that's what they're talking about, it's coming. So. Uh, and they're talking about what to buy. And th I mean, this has real life consequences because um, going into what, late August, early September, parents are going to be doing back to school shopping, yeah. things like this. Right. So mm -hmm. what are things that people can do now when we understand the financial markets and you all educate people on investing and how the markets work? Latoya, what are things that African-Americans and especially African-American parents can do to prepare for this and to, you know, create wealth, invest, things like this. Wow. I don't want to say go, go out and buy those exact same products they're speaking of, but if you're in need and you want to do that before that, that rate increase, I will mm -hmm. highly suggest to go out and do so. Tariffs with the, the whole back and forth, especially with China, we do import a lot of things from there. The very okay. products that certain companies make. And just like you're speaking about the diapers, the pencils, the back to school items, you can get them at Walmart. A bunch of companies wrote a letter to the president stating that exact same stuff we're talking about right now. Don't increase or the, the tariffs basically because it's going to have a direct impact on 
the consumers. And we're talking about not even millions of dollars. We're talking about billions of dollars that's right. going to be passed on to consumers. So we're going to end up paying more for products just because of the, the conflict that's currently going on right now. I believe there was a, a subtle way or a, a bit of um, a better way to go at it if they wanted to renegotiate the, the whole contracts with, um, with China. But however, we're dealing with someone that's not necessarily level-headed when it comes to negotiations. That's another right. conversation. Well, he doesn't right? even understand how tariffs work. And you've had financial experts who said that. He does not understand how tariffs work. And you have, soy, I'm looking at an article right now from May 20th, 2019, from Yahoo Finance. Soybean farmers fear China tariffs could shut down business for good. You know, I've, I've seen articles, I saw one uh, a couple of days ago about a soybean farmer who says these tariffs could cause him to lose $150,000. He voted for Trump. He said he's not going to vote for Trump again. Okay. And, uh, uh, yeah. go, go ahead, Latoya, then we'll come back to Latoya. No, I was going to say, I believe many people will not, especially those who did because of not only tariffs, we could speak about taxes in itself. Mm -hmm. Like who they really benefit. They're not benefit anyone in the middle class or lower middle class or even the poor um so yes his tariffs the the taxes <laughs> everything is just out of control at this point absolutely so we're posting the the links to these articles we're posting here on the thread of the broadcast people you can pose your questions here to uh latoya and ernest they are the co-founders of the uh, profitroom.com now uh if you've been seeing my Facebook live broadcast and YouTube broadcast. You've heard me talk about the Profit Room. The ProfitRoom.com is a stock market trading and education company that has mentorship programs that are designed for beginners. And they teach individuals like yourself how to create generational wealth through trading, trading and investing in the financial markets. They teach you about the stock market, options, futures, uh, foreign exchange markets, etc. Okay, so we have one question from Abini. She asks, who, who would you suggest to use for Bitcoin? The Abini, do you mean uh, which exchange do you, which is, which exchange to purchase Bitcoin? I guess that's what she's saying. Uh, I when I bought Bitcoin, I haven't bought Bitcoin in some time now. But when I did buy Bitcoin, I used Coinbase. Who who do you all suggest for? Uh, yeah, uh, Bitcoin? same Coinbase. Coinbase. That's what we have. We got Coinbase. They got Binance. Binance as like well. That. Yeah, you can do that through there. Okay, and that's an app that you can download. Uh, Coinbase.com, I think, is the website, and I have mm -hmm. the app on uh, one of my phones also. But I haven't bought Bitcoin, and uh, <laughs> since since the no, Bitcoin wow. futures came out, I haven't purchased Bitcoin. Correct, because that just yeah. killed the price. Yeah, that just Correct. killed the price of it. Okay, um, and how you doing, brother Eli? Uh, any other questions? Go ahead and post them here. How you doing, Gary? Um, let's see. Now. Uh, one person said that uh, somebody uh, said that uh, tariffs are good for the U.S. economy. Uh, not these tariffs. Uh, these tariffs for, on China, yeah. th these tariffs are not good for the U.S. economy. Yeah. Uh, read the article once again. We post a link here. NBCnews.com. School supplies, smartphones, and diapers, what to buy now before new tariffs, new tariffs hits. New tariffs hit. If you were planning a large purchase six weeks from now, you may want to make that purchase today, uh, says consumer experts. And you're talking about an additional $200 billion on mm -hmm. goods coming from China uh, that will increase the price most likely by 25% if the uh, American companies uh, pass, pass that uh, increase on to consumers, okay? So mm -hmm. when you hear Trump talking about wages are increasing, they are increasing maybe about 3% month over month from last year. Yeah. Inflation is increasing about 1.92% month over month from last year. But these tariffs are going wipe to out, wipe out basically that 3% increase in yeah, exactly. wages. Exactly. Am I correct? correct? That's correct. 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 And these, this, a lot of people don't understand. That's why, when when we follow these markets as a, as traders and investors, it's mm -hmm. been very volatile. The past yeah. couple of weeks, this has been a great market for Latoya and I, 
because we're trading based off the emotion. You know, mm -hmm. every Monday, the past two Mondays, besides yesterday, it was drastic movement in the market. Market right. dropping three, 400 points, then right. recovering again, then right. dropping again. There's a right. lot of investors that people don't, don't even know what to think, you know? And this is where, mm -hmm. like when we teach our students how to be able to capitalize off of these moves, this supply and demand, but it's also economic movements that happens because we're trading and we're investing based off the emotion. And right. that's where, like, even if you're not trading, like we just mentioned, some products take three to six weeks. Like Latoya said, a lot of these companies like Puma and uh, Nike and Adidas, they wrote to Trump because their orders come in three to six week increments. Maybe some of our viewers have a Shopify store. you got an Amazon store. This mm -hmm. is going to affect your business if you're a drop shipper. You know, whatever them cell phone cases you were buying. Explain ahead, that. Explain, yeah. explain that. How's it going to affect their yeah. business? The e-commerce. How's it going to affect the e-commerce business? So if you 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 were buying them cell phone cases for thirty cents and selling them for twenty dollars on your Amazon store, right? That's a good margin, great markup. But now you got to put in the shipping and the price. That's why it takes so long to come from China or certain country. That's going to affect all that e-commerce and that because somebody has to pay. Somebody has to pay for that. And thus, you're going to put that cost because you're going to keep your margins. Just think right. of you as your individual company. I mean, you're going right. to pass it on. You have to keep your profit it. margins. Exactly. That's the same thing. When you go to Home Depot and you look at those windows or you look at that countertop at Lowe's, they have to pass it on because, like you said, the fuel didn't, price didn't change for the trucks shipping it. Uh, right. FedEx, UPS, the jet fuel, didn't, that price didn't change. They right. still have to ship that stuff over. So they're going to keep their costs the same and pass it on to you. And right. that's what you asked us before. How can we as a people is that we, we can get ahead of that game where we stop that. Uh, I like to say that program thinking that it really doesn't have effects on us. Like if, 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 you, if you're not a big Wall Street guy or a big Wall Street girl, you know, this doesn't involve me. That's how we've been programmed before. Like, mm -hmm. oh, this doesn't matter. Right. I can't afford this. That's for big money. That's for rich. That's rich people problems. Right. That's no such thing. You right. know, we got to take <laughs> that program away. That's right. our. We're problem. all connected in this economy. We're all connected. Exactly. We all are connected in this economy, and like you mentioned before, there's a lot of people involved with the crypto and Bitcoin, and we're not against that. Mm -hmm. The stock market has been around over 200 years. Right. Legacy have been built on the stock market for over 200 years. And currently still, um, we have uh, the stock market building a uh, legacy over legacy over legacy. So what we have to do is be a part of that some type of way. We got to make sure that we understand which, what's going on because these smaller companies that we're dealing with, no matter what, these utility companies, that we're dealing with, they're still involved in our lives personally. Who you pay your electric to, your yes. gas, your cell phone, a lot of that is still, it's not necessarily, I mean, the currency in itself, but it affects us with our dollar. Like we watch yes, the US exactly. dollar go up and down mm -hmm. and we just have to make sure that we're conscious of that. You know, right. be conscious of that. Okay, uh, let me. Uh, I, I want this. This article right here is pertinent for African American parents mm -hmm. because they have uh, they're, they're sending children to prom to the prom. You have graduations. We just saw Robert F. Smith uh, at the Morehouse uh, College graduation, uh, pledging to uh, pay uh, forty million dollars to pay off the student loan debts of uh, Morehouse. And then you're going to have uh, students graduating from high school, going to college. Parents are going to be buying a lot of things for them to go to college, buying things who, when they graduate, uh, graduation presents, getting them ready uh, to uh, go out into the real world. OK, so let's look at this. And I'm going to come to you, Latoya, uh, to find out what African-Americans should be doing or if they're um, 
particular companies that we should invest in, et cetera. And then I'll come back to you, Ernest. So mm -hmm. if we look at this article, once again, from NBCnews.com. This is from uh, May 15, 2019. Uh, and they picked it up from CNBC.com. Uh, school supplies, smartphones, and diapers. What to buy now before new tariffs hit. As trade tensions between the U.S. and China escalate, uh, with both uh, sides increasing tariffs on a widening selection of products, American consumers will see higher prices as soon as this summer. Now, summer officially starts June 20th or June 21st when you have the uh, uh, summer uh, this, uh, the uh, summer solstice. Okay, things are summer solstice. Now, uh, tariffs. Uh, on goods traded between the U.S. and China have already increased in several stages since early 2018. Now, Donald Trump has added a 25% tariff up from his original proposal of 10% on another $200 billion worth of Chinese imports, imports coming into the U.S., and China hit back with 25% duties on another $60 billion worth of U.S. goods that the U.S. exports to China. So, um, Latoya, what should African American parents do now, and how should we uh, invest? How, what, what should they do when it comes to investing uh, when we deal with this volatility in the market? Also, investing is more so you're you're foreseeing the future for the long haul. Mm -hmm. So, I would say. The best bet, especially those that may not have a lot of knowledge about the market, okay, index funds, or some type of uh, mutual fund that's steady. I would not suggest necessarily individual companies during this time where the market's extremely volatile, because you okay. could be one, you could be up one minute and down, you know, the next day or the next week or the next month, especially with all the talks going on. So that would be my my best advice right now. Do not search for individual stocks during these volatile time because it's, it's too in, um, it's too volatile right now for the, um, especially the new investor at this point. Okay, and then, uh, cause we, we looked at the Dow Jones Industrial Average which was made up of 30 stocks. We saw Correct. the Dow was, was dropping last week. We saw that it's up. Uh, today, 193 points, but it's volatile based upon what's going on in China and, and, and mm -hmm. you know, good with the tariffs. Okay, so uh, 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 Latoya, explain, you mentioned an index fund. Explain to people what is an index fund. An index fund is basically a fund. It's, it's mixed with different companies, different stocks, and there's formulas and calculations to it that I'm not going to really dive into, but it's supposed yeah. to be Don't steady. nerd us out. Just <laughs> right, right. No, not at all. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be steady. More of a uh, right. steady stream of, of income. Okay. So it is not, it's, there, there's various ones. It's not as volatile as like holding an individual stock. You okay. often hear diversification, diversification, um, hammer down your throat, but that's pretty much what an index fund can offer. Some diversification, especially during times, but during times like this. All right, and you, uh, through the profit room, uh, you all teach people about index funds also and how to invest in one? Yeah, we teach people about various asset classes within the market besides just trading. So they can get knowledge of, okay, what is a mutual fund? How do mutual funds work? And that ties into if anyone has an employer and they may invest or um have a contribution taken out their check for their retirement. So that has to do with mutual funds. So we help people understand that aspect of investing in case they ever wonder what their um, re retirement fund looks like or their portfolio look like. Okay, now Latoya, being, being that you mentioned mutual funds also, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, um, may be familiar with mutual funds, uh, maybe through, uh, we, we see advertisements about them, uh, uh, mutual funds, and with 401ks, people are familiar with 401ks through their jobs, uh, right. oftentimes. What, what's the difference between a mutual fund and an index fund, if you don't mind uh, answering that? Um, they're similar in, in nature. So okay. 
the, you're basically investing in a group of you're, businesses you're exactly and it, in, it in a particular on, industry possibly yes it depends on the asset class so everyone's okay. 401k comprises of mutual funds mm -hmm. some of the mutual funds are index funds as well okay mutual funds have a a large range of different instruments or asset classes that will be allocated to comprise of that mutual fund. For example, the Dow Jones, that's an index. That's an index fund. Right. 30 companies. 30 companies. Right. But the index is basically just a group of different companies. companies. Different companies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that arrives at a certain um, asset allocation class, depending on how that portfolio manager basically slices up that pie in order to form that fund. So mutual funds can have stocks, it can have bonds, it can have foreign currencies in it that could comprise or make up a mutual fund. Some mutual funds will have all stocks. Some okay. mutual funds can have all bonds. And that's where you get like um, the whole investing aspect, conservative investor, or are you aggressive investor? They have a fund right. to place every person based off of what they choose to be in or how they feel if they feel aggressive or the older you get, they want to put you more so into a conservative type of investing vehicle. Absolutely. Okay, now, Ernest, uh, we have a question here uh, on YouTube, uh, and they ask, do you think it is wise to purchase gold and silver coins? Um, Ernest, uh, uh, let's talk about this, because this is something else that you all teach at the profit room, mm -hmm. is that correct? Correct. So... You always got to look at how, like you mentioned before, inflation, when mm -hmm. the market's like, if you watch the dollar, the dollar go up like crazy, the market go up, then, then gold will end up coming down. I'm a believer. I'm a trader, right? If you're going to buy on hold on gold, that's something still good. I believe like we are, anything that's a natural resource is going to be valuable. Like, that's why I trade a lot of oil, right? Okay. I trade a lot of oil. And like, just to answer your question, doing signs of recession, mm -hmm. index funds or companies that are utility-based, electric, gas, water, you can invest in those. Those are usually solid companies. Usually they have mutual electric, funds. Electric, gas, that, water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, those companies usually stay stable because that's the stuff that we need. Gold is a natural resource. So I can anticipate for myself that it will not get played out, that it will be not worthless. It's going to be worthless. I mean, it's going to be worth something at one point. But currently now, with the market going up like crazy, the value of gold comes down and it fluctuates, just like the dollar fluctuates, because we're pushing an inflated market higher and higher and higher, right, since we're not on a gold standard. But Right. If you can afford gold, it's not a bad investment. But there's many other ways, and that's what we teach, that you don't have to actually buy the gold bar and hold it, where for a fraction of that cost, you can still be able to capitalize off of that movement and that fluctuation of gold and still make a profit. Because it depends on what type of gold you're buying, what type of silver you're buying. It goes real deep if you're going to buy it as the physical actual um, uh, co uh, uh, commodity versus trading it or investing in it. Because they have funds, like Latoya said, they have gold funds, they have silver funds, they have oil funds that will still grow and you can still capitalize off the price increase of gold eventually or silver eventually when it moves. But okay. they're not as volatile in this market, but they do fluctuate. Gold futures does fluctuate on a regular basis. But if we do face a situation where there could be possibly another recession, mm -hmm. natural, natural resources will be the best way to really go hold on something like that.
natural resources. Okay. Um, okay, you, you all can post your questions here. We'll be here for a few more minutes. Uh, Mark, we'll come to your question in just a minute. Uh, now, some of you uh, may have seen the article that blacknews.com did on uh, Ernest and Latoya. Uh, it's from November 13th, 2018. We just posted the link here on the broadcast. Um, the first black owned day trading company of its kind is teaching courses on how to profit from the stock market. And it talks about how they were uh, day traders and they uh, created this company um, that, is, that is an education company. The ProfitRoom.com is an education company. And uh, Ernest and Latoya La trade stocks, options, Forex, and futures. And they have designed mentorship programs to teach others how to create income and generational wealth. Their goal is to help others to at least make an additional $100 to $200 a day trading live with them. And they already have four full-time minority traders uh, tra uh, trading and moderating daily in the futures and Forex, for foreign exchange uh, uh, room, okay? So we posted that link here. Everybody check that out. And let's see, uh, Mark had a question. He said, is the cannabis industry volatile too? Uh, or also, he said, I'm doing well investing in uh, GW Pharmaceuticals, Hexo, Aprira and uh, Zynerba uh, Pharmaceutical. So is the cannabis industry volatile as well? It's, it's very volatile. It's okay. very volatile. And re just like how you mentioned, we get a lot of questions like that with uh, the cannabis. Now with a lot of laws with hemp that's yes. coming, uh, coming out as well as we see with Bitcoin and a lot of when the blue blockchain companies came out. Yeah, blockchain you, technology, yes. Yeah, you can make a lot of money with those companies. You can make a lot of money, but you can lose a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can lose a lot of money. We focus on controlled trading. And La La Latoya could probably explain a little bit more about what are whales and stuff in these markets, well, like cannabis industries and the smaller cap low float stocks. Right. With, with, within, I would say currently, if your investments are doing well, hold mm -hmm. on to them, keep them. Um, like, like I said before, we like to separate investing from trading because it, it is two different things. When you're investing, you're, you're investing for the foreseeable future in hopes that your investment will grow over time, which is a, a definite um, great concept. Uh, one thing we do teach in regards to help with long-term investing is how to read a, a stock chart. So that very um, industry, yes. like if I pull up any um, marijuana or cannabis stock, I can automatically look at it and tell, okay, can it go up even higher? Or is this company a lousy company? And that's all based on just looking at a chart. So that's one of the advantages of knowing how to read a chart without even knowing the underlying history about the stock. So that's one thing we like to um, help investors learn too over time because we get so many questions or we'll have people say, hey, I invested or I have X amount of shares in Boeing, for example. And when Boeing fell apart, oh man, I wish I sold X, Y, Z, but they don't know when to sell. It's only because they don't know how to read a chart how to read the charge, you know, mm -hmm. when to get in, when to get out. Okay. Exactly. Now, uh, Christina asked, do you guys teach Forex trading? Yes. Correct. Yes. Go ahead so, and explain to me. Uh, 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 Latoya. Um, so, yeah. So when it comes to charts and when it comes to trading the different markets, so you have your stock market. Everyone knows the stock market has been around forever. Forex is one of the largest markets trillions of dollars is traded every day within that market because you have different countries as well that's heavily involved in trading forex such as china japan london all of that and so when you learn how to read a chart it translates into looking at for the forex market because it's just different foreign pairs or the currency pairs on a chart so you will know 
what goes up, what goes down, and the same so, thing. So you're dealing with the different foreign. You de you're dealing with trading in different foreign currencies. Correct. So it's yeah, usually a pound. pair. Yeah, yeah, it's usually a pair against another pair. So like the U.S. dollar against the Canadian dollar, or the U.S. dollar against the Japanese um, yen. So those pairs fluctuate and they're highly news driven as well. So once the news hit with the tariffs, once again, that affected the, the Chinese. It affected like the Japanese yen, for example. It will affect different currency pairs, all based off of economic news that affect the markets, the broader markets as a whole. So yes, we do any, any we teach any markets that have a chart associated with it. So that's crypto, that's options. Cryptocurrency, yeah. Yep, that's Forex, and that's commodities known as futures trading as well. Okay, we'll come to your question in just a minute, uh, Eastside Wood, and uh, we'll come to you also, Trina. Okay, so um, Ernest, for people who, who say, well, look, I want to learn more about this, I want to learn more about stocks, um, what should they do? And uh, you have uh, explained to people uh, how the profit room works. Is this uh, uh, how long are the classes? Explain to people how that works. So uh, the profit room, we have many programs. We, okay. speci we specialize in a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching. It's almost like a, mm -hmm. a private personal trainer. Sure. And um, Latoya uh, mentioned about this a little bit later too. We also have a group group trainings where we teach live individuals in the groups mm -hmm. and when you come to the profit room like our, our main priority is that risk management and capital preservation okay. and also to prove to you that you can do this you can do this you're no different than any of us all traders are the same it's just some that work harder when the market is closed and what we always want to instill with our people we talk to, especially our people of color, we're teaching you a controlled way of learning. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of questions about crypto. We get a lot of questions about Forex. We get a lot of questions about cannabis, which is great. But all of those have a lot of rush effects, yes. fast money, fast. And that's a focus where as seasoned traders like us can mentally and financially damage you and builds a bad reputation. It's okay. nothing against those markets, but when you come to us, we're gonna start you off to build that confidence and find controlled movements. A lot of people we get are uh, clients that have the water cooler talk at work, the Facebook yeah. chat, people about this stock, about that, I gotta jump in this, I made X, Y, Z amount of money. Once we give you the knowledge, the money is going to come. We don't teach money. We teach trading. We teach you how to invest. We teach you the right mindset. And we you give you structure. And we put that together. Then you get that aha moment. And you'll be, you're able to stay in this game for a long time. You're not burnt out. You're not sitting back that they should have, could have, would have you know, of, of, of trading, or I lost this amount of money, or this program didn't work. So we instill that with all our clients, especially the premium ones on one-on-one, -on -one, because we all come from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Right. But now we've put together some amazing programs. I know, Latoya, you want to mention it about bringing people together as a group to make it even more affordable. Do you want to touch a little bit about that, Latoya? Um, yeah, so we we basically been doing this for for a while. We started off with um, individuals as individual client base before moving into like groups. So we found that there are a lot of groups, groups at work or organization that may want their um, people to learn and how to trade or invest in the market. So we started doing group live classes as well. So we've okay. been doing them pretty much every month. We have one that's coming up um, starting June as well. If anyone wanted to check that out, you can, it's on the link that you posted as well. It's updated on that page for anyone want to check out that group link. That way you will learn about the markets because a lot of people, they just don't know. 
for whatever reason. So we break it down um, in order to help you learn, in order to help you understand not only what your future investments may look like, but how to get that income instead of getting that part-time job killing yourself. We teach you how to sit here at the comfort of your own home and produce that one, two, or three hundred dollars, whatever it is, mm-hmm. with risk management. And basically, so- basically a day, uh, either a day or a week, uh, Latoya, a mm-hmm. hundred or two hundred dollars extra a day or maybe a week. That's what you're talking about, right? I'm so- talking about a day, correct? You're talking about a day. I'm okay. talking about part time income in a day. Okay. Sometimes ten minutes, fifteen an hour, but it's it's controlled. We, we educate you to the point where you will get that aha moment. Like Ernest says, like, wow, I never understood. I don't want to call it easy, but like he said, with the work you put in and learning this, it becomes easy over time because now you're programmed just to perform and you know exactly what you're seeing in order to produce that income. Right. So, so what happened, I'll come to you just a minute, Ernest, and then we'll go to uh, a few more Mm -hmm. questions. So back in 2015, if we look at the uh, state of women, a state of uh, women owned business report from 2015 from American Express open, they talked about how African American women were creating businesses at six times the national average. Right. Mm -hmm. But when we look at, uh, and then when we look at the report from uh, 2018 from the state of uh, women owned business from American Express open uh, African American women, we're creating businesses at three times the national average. But when we look at, when we go in and we look at more specifics, we, we know that uh, there are about 4 million African-American-owned businesses. African-American women own about 2.5 million of them. But 95% of our businesses in general don't have any employees. But also when you look at um, Black women-owned business, businesses, a large percentage of them, uh, the women are working uh, 39 hours or less in the business. And most of them are not quitting their daytime job. They're doing this business on the side to make up for the fact that the average African-American woman makes only 63 cents for every dollar that the average white male makes. Okay, so what you're talking about, Latoya, is a very uh, uh, a very good way time management wise to make extra money. And this is. Uh, you can make the money faster this way than just doing a part-time business. That's what it sounds like you're saying, Latoya. Um, somewhat, but in not general. necessarily. Because I believe in strongly entrepreneurship. So if somebody oh, right. have a a side business and right. that's their own business, right. I'm not talking about those people at all. I'm talking about those people that have a full-time job, mm-hmm. but they may work somewhere else for somebody else to make a little change on the side. Or right, they may have a part-time out, job. They yeah, like a part-time part. job. They want to sure. go out at night to make, you know, when they rather be home. I'm talking about those people, not those that are right. entrepreneur that have a side hustle and just trying to grow it. That's that's something completely different. Right. You know, well, let me just say this. If somebody's taught entrepreneurship for seven years and managed a business consulting company for seven years, mm-hmm. right? What you're talking about, you can make money much faster what you're talking about than a lot of businesses. <laughs> I, I'm telling yeah. you, having yeah. helped people write business plans, having helped people get funding for businesses, having actually taught entrepreneurship. I mean, it look, it sounds real good on the shark tank. I'm telling, but I'm telling you, right. when you're an actual entrepreneur, I mean, you, I mean, this stuff is hand to hand combat. Right, right, right. It's, it's definitely yeah. uh, a combat. But the thing is, I always say is that passion. If someone mm-hmm. has a passion consultant, go for it. You're not going to stop that person. No matter how I say, oh, you can do this on the side, they have that natural passion to consult. They're going to continue to do their thing. So right. it's, sometimes it's not necessarily about the money. It's about your passion. Right. right? right. Some people haven't necessarily found their passion. And that's one reason why we educate, because perhaps this can be your newfound passion. Right, exactly. Now, mm-hmm. I'm going to come to you just a second, Ernest. Uh, so I put up the article here from Forbes.com because I do a lot of research on this. Um, and, and like I said, I used to teach entrepreneurship. My degree is in business administration with a major in marketing. People think my degree is in history. I've been studying history for 27 years. My degree mm-hmm. is actually in business administration with a major in marketing from Wayne State University in Detroit. If we look at the article uh, very quickly here, 
uh, and I'll come to you, Ernest, if we look at the, and then we'll go back to the questions. If we look at the article from um, Forbes.com, Forbes.com, September 9th, 2018, Black Women Entrepreneurs, the Good and Not So Good News. Black women entrepreneurs, the good and not so good news. And in the article, it talks about how, according to the 2018 State of Women-Owned Business Report commissioned by American Express, while the number of women-owned businesses grew an impressive 58% from 2007 to 2018, the number of firms owned by Black women grew by a stunning 164% from 2007 to 2018, ne nearly three times the rate. So. There are 2.4 million African-American women-owned businesses in 2018. It's probably about 2.6 million now, but at the time of this article, 2.4 million. Most of them were owned by women 35 to 54 years old, African-American women 35 to 54 years old. Uh, Black women are the only racial or ethnic group with more business ownership than their male peers, according to the mm -hmm. Federal Reserve. All right. Now, if we get into more specifics dealing with money, because this is all about money. I got to tell people, you you know, you got a whole lot of businesses on paper, but they ain't generating any revenue. OK, you got your LLC, you know, you got your your, your EIN number from the from the IRS. Yeah, it, It's on paper, but it ain't generating no money. OK, American Express yeah. found that the gap is widening between the average revenue of businesses owned by women of color and those owned by non-minority women. For women of color in general, average revenue dropped from $84,000 a year in 2007 to $66,400 a year in 2018. While for non-minority businesses, revenue rose from 81, from sorry, revenue rose from $181,000 a year in 2007 to $212,000 uh, and 300, $212,000 a year in 2018. Okay, and the gap between African American women-owned businesses, uh, average revenue, and all women-owned businesses uh, is the greatest as well. So we're seeing the revenue falling as there are more African American-owned businesses. Okay, so Ernest, uh, people who are, are watching now and people who are going to watch this broadcast and say, "Well, look, you know, I do own a business on the side, and I'm working mm -hmm. nine to five. Okay, and you know." Uh, but I want to, I'm interested in investing and making my money work for me as opposed to me working for my money. What should they do, Ernest? Like we mentioned before, mm -hmm. try to invest in yourself and understanding the financial markets. Like I'll, I'll give myself, for example, <clears throat> I come from a skilled labor background. My family owned a heating and cooling uh, business for over 40 years. Heating and um, cooling, okay. Correct. You know, and even myself, I'm a real estate investor and have done some developing and I still own those properties. And currently now I do still real estate, mm -hmm. but I have to deal with people. I got to right. deal with selfishness. I got to deal with other people's problems and emotions and issues and cities and regulations, right. things like that in order to pull money in. Right here with the trading, what I do full time for a living, I just dealing with myself. I got to mm -hmm. deal with Latoya too, of course, <laughs> and right. our clients. But it is bring a peace of mind because I've never been a salesperson, and I'm not right. against sales, right? right? What I know a lot of people with a, a side hustle have to sell, they have to recruit. Um, they have to do a lot of marketing. You have to put a lot of yourself out there, which is great. We're doing the same thing with our company as building a brand. But having some knowledge of the financial markets where the, the stock market, Forex, whatever market you trade, it doesn't, it's not impressed about how you look, what status you come from, what socioeconomic, what neighborhood you come from. It doesn't matter. If you know how to enter a trade and be able to pull out some money, even if it's only $50 and you made $50 in 15 minutes, if you made $200 or $100 in like maybe four or five hours, right. I'm, I'm returning my, Mike, I'm returning my, my time for my money. Right. So even if I only made 
$300 for that week. And it took me about two or three hours. That can eventually add up. The more confidence I have, the more money I can start contributing. The more that could pay for a cell phone bill, that could pay for a babysitter, that could pay for something. But what I had to do was only have to click a button based off something strategic that I learned in order to pull that money. Whereas, okay. go ahead, finish whereas, that whereas sometimes, and I'm not against that, you know, I'm not against anybody's hustle. When you, when you go like, I, I have a personal trainer that trains me and right. I have to pay them money for an hour to push me like crazy. Right. And I can make that same amount of money within a few minutes. So I'm right. just comparing, I'm just comparing the two. They're both respectable jobs. They're both respectable careers. But if you have the opportunity to learn how to pull money out of the market some type of way, you're saving your time versus the money. And okay. at my stage of life, and mm -hmm. I like black men, like I lost my father young. He died of pancreatic cancer at 67. Wow. And, and as a as a, a as a minority man, no thanks. Mm -hmm. his biggest fear was that he was going to run out of money. Even though he was well to do, he felt right. that he was going to outlive his money. So I'm not against the long term and I'm not against the investing, but I'm conscious about the present and mm -hmm. my time and what I can do in order to generate income. I right. know, in this, I know I'm never going to go broke. I know, I know I'm not going to go hungry, right, Mike? You know what I'm saying? I'm right. too smart for that, exactly. no matter what. I'm exactly. too smart for that in general. But I want to be able to live comfortable now. Even right. if I want to be able to take my time and live comfortable. And that's what we try to show people how to do in the market. So we don't knock any other type of hustle that you may have, or side business, or career, like, like the toy you said, passion. That's your passion. But our passion right now is to educate our people in the community to say through strategic education, right? Just like any other profession, you can do this and be able to generate money in a controlled atmosphere. Okay, so, so very quickly, Ernest, if people watching right now and they say, I want to earn an extra 100 to $200 a day, like Latoya was saying, Ernest, what should they do? Well, we have a strategic course. So even if you don't, even if you don't come to us, the best thing that you do is go online, look at YouTube, everything about trading the financial markets, understanding the financial markets. We focus a lot on technicals, emotions of the market, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, in this type of business, we all read and learn a different way. We all interpret a different way. You could read a book but don't understand it. You can read a book on plumbing. You can read a book on electricity until you're that journeyman, a person, and actually next to a mentor, you really might not understand Ohm's law. You might really not understand, uh, you know, what a half inch nipple is or something like that. If you get right. my drift from uh, that pr perspective, you don't understand what a male adapter. And that's what we do as trading coaches. That's what right. we suggest. And it depends on the individual personality. So I would suggest if you're serious about this, after exhausting all the free material, reading your books, the YouTube university, hire a mentor that you feel comfortable with that can help you step by step in order for you to build consistency. Because you're only as good as your last trade. Right. That's what we would say. You know, somebody, I bought Apple at $47. It's $200. Okay, what did you do after that? You get what I'm saying? Right. That's how, like you said, like in the sales, you're only as good as your last sale. In real estate, you're only as good uh, as your last sell of the house. You got to keep this going. And that's what Latoya and I do on a daily basis. That's why we trade live every day in our trading room. They hear Latoya and I every single day trade because we want to master our craft and pass this on to other individuals. All right. So Latoya. Yes. You look, you're sitting there looking like Serena Williams. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, if somebody wants to make an extra hundred or two hundred dollars a day and they're watching right now, they're listening to the podcast. Uh -huh. Serena, what should they do? They should go to that link. 
Get on on this. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> the profitroom.com yes, forward slash wealth building. Go ahead. In June, the Sunday. Let's go. Let's get this. I'm you ready. said June. You, what'd you say? June so Sunday, Sunday is going to be five Sundays. We're holding the class live. Okay, live. go ahead and tell so us about that. Live on a webinar. Webinar. You don't have to come fly out. People ask, oh, do I have to fly? No, no, no. Just like you're watching us now is how we're going to train and educate you and go through the various markets so you could be well-informed, well-prepared, and ready. Okay, theprofitroom.com forward slash wealth building. We posted a link here. A beanie said, I'm ready to invest in myself now. The profit, a beanie's watching right now. Theprofitroom.com forward slash wealth building. We posted a link here. Uh, Latoya, say that again. Now, you said June and you said five Sundays. T tell us what's going to happen in June for five Sundays. Oh, we Latoya. can't hear you. Latoya, five, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Five Sundays, five Sundays in June, the class will be live. We're starting Sunday, June 2nd. Okay, that's so our, that's our next group live course. Okay, so wrapping Sunday, up one June right 2nd. now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead and finish. Now, I was just going to say we're wrapping up one now for the month of May. We've been um, doing this for, we get some great, great, great. Um, students eager to learn hungry and they're taken out and they're learning a lot some of these students trade other markets and they're benefit and then they're making money just from the things they did not know but now they know and we welcome all new beginners because this is what it's about just passing on the knowledge so okay just, just to Go piggyback ahead. a little bit Go ahead. we meet every we still have our private one-on-one -on -one. you can always look at the site but a lot of organizations have been contacting us, like Latoya said, for group sessions. It mm -hmm. makes it much more affordable and it makes it much more interactive. So we hold, we hold them on Sunday evening. Mm -hmm. And this, this time go around, another bonus is that we're going to be able to record them for those who can't make it. But with these Sunday study sessions, we have live teaching, question and answer. We give you guys homework. We talk about the homework the following week. We hold you accountable. And in those weeks, those five weeks, we're moving step by step by step by step so you can grasp the understanding of the financial markets. Okay, so uh, five Sundays starting June 2nd, 2019. What, what is the, and this is a group, uh, this is in a group uh, online like we are now. Correct. What time does it, what time does it start on, on Sundays? We're gonna hold it at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, 6.30. Mm -hmm. 6 30 p.m eastern standard time and we'll come to your question in just a minute uh east side would uh, about how long are the sessions they generally run about an hour and a half sometimes okay. a little longer if we get a lot of questions we like to be able to answer everyone's questions live so they're not left thinking or worrying or you know lingering questions so it's good to do it live okay now ernest you said you have a lot of groups coming to you give, give me some examples you don't have to say the actual name of the group but just yeah. give me some examples what do you mean when you say you have a lot of groups coming to you so we get a lot of uh women's organizations sure like uh, latoya latoya was able to head up a, a black women's organization we're working uh we just wrapping up with a real estate association mm -hmm. um we also have a nurses association uh okay. a, a woman uh it was a black nurse association that what happens is you got so many aspects, aspects of investing out here that people do. It doesn't matter right. what they deal with. But now it's just like we deal a lot with real estate people as well, because when the market's not doing good or they sitting there stagnant or they have extra money or people just in general have a 401k and they want to be able to manage it on their own or just understand how they can just change different allotments during a cycle like this in the market. So they'll see us and they say, hey, I have a group of people, but okay. you know, instead of paying for a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, which is amazing and great, we get a, a lot of students that way, is it possible if we could bring our group together and come to you guys and be able to get the same type of content? So we put that out to all types of organizations okay. and we'll work with them. It, it doesn't matter because we know different price points. Everybody has can't afford a certain price point. So it makes it more feasible. But we find in a group session like this, mm -hmm. you're holding each other accountable because this certain group is going to be like a team. They're going right. to, you know, they're going to get to know each other. 
in that sense. And they're going to meet every single week. We do it via Zoom and we have our charts and our presentation. And you, you're holding yourself accountable like that. So because some people are shy with the one on ones. Right. And that's exactly. what we're doing. People been reaching out. So any other organizations that even may be listening to your show, it doesn't matter. We come out to you, too. We don't have no problem okay. so flying and going places as well to p- present. Okay. Uh, so any you, can type do it, of you can do it in person or you can do it. Uh, through Zoom or something like that, through through, the, through technology. Correct. Okay, so when you talk about doing it in a group, it can be a sorority, it can be maybe a church, uh, it could be a nursing organization, it could be a group of teachers. How many people are you talking about in a group, uh, Ernest? In a, one, a range of, you know, how many in a group? We had one was 100 people one wow. uh, the other week. Almost 200. So 200. Then the, we had a... February, then we could do smaller groups like 45, 50, mm-hmm. because what, what happens is with with them, people come in, they get that knowledge, right? And it pushes them to go even further, right? It pushes them to go even further and further because now what we're giving you is more information to go dig down this rabbit hole and like, oh, because we don't even talk about terrorists that much. Mm-hmm. We're, we're trying to get you to the point of be able to sit at home, turn on your computer, look at a stock chart, evaluate it, and be able to get a entry and be able to get an exit on a price of a stock or an option. We okay. teach a lot now, and that's the combination with options because that's a beautiful aspect because of small margin requirements in order to do that. So we break that down from a to Z, from a beginner to understanding how to read what CNBC brings out, right. all the crazy waves and stuff like that. What's the actual market in general? What's a stock? What's an option? What's a, a, a good broker? Right. We, we break it down in a structurized way. By that week five, yes. you'll be able to sit back at the comfort of your computer know where to go to, know what to look at, and be intelligent enough to make a controlled trade. And that's okay. our goal like that. Okay, so East Side asked a question. So when we look at the five-week course on Sunday, starting Sunday, June 2nd, 2019, at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, East Side would ask the question, how, how much is it to enroll in this five-week Sunday course? How much is it, Latoya? I know she broke it down. It's on the um Yeah, it's on the it's on the our admin um did that. So I, I would have to double check, which I can do right now to see what it is. Okay. If you can double check that and then we'll go to the next question. We'll take a couple more questions and we'll get out of here. But if you can check on that, Latoya, because people are asking asking the question right now. Uh let me look at this uh next question here. So Christina said that uh can i do this with a with a nine to five job you answer that question yes you can do with the nine to five you don't have to quit your daytime job girl don't we well, no. well, you don't have to, <laughs> unless you're making so much money you decide you want to now mark asked the question is investing 200 dollars a week in standard and s p index funds standard and poor's index funds a path to a fat purse over a long period of time i would have to say yes okay you know how there's a rule of 72 Mm -hmm. Don't ask me the math behind it, but they said, you know, over a period of 10 years, 20 years, and if you continuously do that, that's a good way to build wealth in the long term, because historically, the market's been on this upstreet incline, incline, we could go back all the way from the time the market existed, we never hit that bottom price, we just, there's dips and ways within the market, but we continue to rise throughout, so yes to that question. Okay, excellent. And uh, let's see, Brother Eli said, don't forget to hit the uh, the like button, okay, and share this message. So everybody who's watching, hit the like button here and share this message also on your social media platform. Share this broadcast on your social media platforms as well. Uh, Will said, uh, I'm in TIA Cref. I'm trying to figure out how to better invest my money, how to go about doing that. I'm uh, 55 years old, and I need to be able to have enough money to substantiate uh, my wife and myself, or to, to, to survive, to take care of his wife mm-hmm. and himself. Um, anybody want to uh, answer that question? So he's already invested in TIA Craft. That's his uh, investment advisor. Yes, yeah, so it sounds like he said, "I'm in a TIA. I'm in TIA 
TIA Craft. I'm trying to figure out how to better invest my money, how to go about doing that. He said he's 55 years old. So what they usually have, usually investment advisors, no matter what fund you're in, you mm -hmm. should be able to get somebody on the phone to walk you through what you're currently in and explain it to you when the outcome in the future, because they do those projections based off of their funds that they they put you in. So it sounds like he's already in an investment and wants to understand more of what he's exactly invested in. OK, so if somebody's already in an investment, they were TIA Cref, they're with uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, other ones. Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. I see their commercials all the time. Yeah. Uh, Ameritrade, things like this. Yeah. Would they also benefit from uh, the Sunday night course? Would they also benefit from uh, the profitroom.com? Correct. They will. Correct. Because what happens is, like I said, we get a lot, a lot of people like him or people like 401ks and retirement funds. Now, the fact that they're telling you what you're invested in, every investment usually has some form of chart that has data in it. Okay. And that data changes all the time because right. of either market movements. The market does three things. It can either go up, down, or sideways. Mm -hmm. And usually history repeats itself. So if you're in a specific fund and we show you how to read that chart, it doesn't mean necessarily you have to quit that fund. You can move those funds during a time where it usually goes into a downturn. For example, we had a client towards the end of last year in October, the market started to turn down, right? We saw that based off of technicals. He was able to get out the specific fund. And as it bottomed and came all the way back down, he was able to allocate his funds back into that same fund in January and he caught the ride going back up. Okay. That doesn't mean you have to quit and take money out. You'll be able to understand where you need to move funds at a certain period of times. You may start seeing a market like this as a technical trader say, Hey, I just want to be in cash this week. So you can log in your account and say, Hey, I want to take my money out the funds in cash and go back to the funds when stuff get a little calm. You know, we got a lot of stuff going on right now with Iran and things like that. It's so much stuff where you can be conscious that we show you of how to allocate and move your retirement funds around and still be in the game. Okay. And we also teach people right. how to uh, read those quarterly reports that they do receive. A lot of people receive mm -hmm. those semi-annual quarterly reports and they don't even open them because they don't even know how to read them or what they're looking at. Right. Uh, prior to uh, becoming a full-time day trader, I used to work at an investment bank and I used to construct those exact same reports and do a lot of the back end analysis for mutual funds, a lot of the expense ratios, a lot of the management fees. So we also help people understand exactly when, exactly what they're looking at when they receive that paperwork in hand. Absolutely. Okay, let's take this last question uh, for Mark, unless somebody has maybe one more question. Um, uh, Mark asks, what's the first step in understanding a chart? Okay, when we see these charts, we watch CNBC, we watch Ali Velshi and Stephanie Rule on MSNBC, Velshi and Rule, um, or you, you get the uh, uh, charge maybe uh, quarterly, things like this. What's the first step in understanding a chart? Um, Ernest. So I would say we look at candlestick charts. Candlestick charts. There's okay. so many charts that's out there. There's bar charts. You look at the wave. The first thing is understanding the emotion. That's why when you look at charts, they have red and green. Green as greed right? Red is fear. So, and that has to be really taught to you if you don't understand it. That's, but that's the first thing is be able to glint. That's what we have red, green, and yellow. That's, this, mm -hmm. that's why the stop sign is red. We use a lot of color coded things in the world that it, it does, it takes the complication out of it. So when you look at a, a stock chart, that chart is telling you the intrinsic value of what investors and the market believes at that particular time, what that company value is. So it has nothing to do, like Boeing is a great company, right? For example, 
Right. They've been around for years, large portfolio. But at that particular time, it was red because of fear, because of news, and because of what was going on. Right. So I know I over-explained it like I always do. That's why it gets heavy. But understanding the chart <laughs> is really understanding the emotion, what, what, okay. what it's actually saying to you. That's what I, that's the first thing. You got to understand what it's actually portraying to you. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, so everybody visit the profitroom.com forward slash uh, wealth building, the profitroom.com forward slash wealth building. Check that out. And uh, they have their uh, group uh, session starting up um, Sunday, June 2nd. Okay. 6.30 PM Eastern standard time. So you can take advantage of that as well. And um, let's see, we'll get uh, closing remarks from you all. We'll start with Latoya. All right, everyone. Well, it was a pleasure being able to come on here live and speak to everyone that's on and that's listening. I can't see whoever because I'm not on YouTube, but I just wanted to say hello. And we look forward to um, answering any questions. We do get tons of email and Ernest and I, we take our time to respond to each and every one of you. Also okay. like to mention, we got a lot of things in the works in the future in terms of a lot of free content for the youth. Um, I'm personally big on that as well as Ernest. Definitely want to help out because I'm from Boston and within the Boston area, when I was growing up, there was no one that I can think of, even in the school system that was mm. investing or even teaching about the stock market. So I love that we have this platform to give back to our communities and continue to grow and foster generations to come because that's one of our missions. Reach one, teach one, and pass it on. Okay, so and it, uh, do you have free content for children, for youth at uh, theprofitroom.com also? That's that's coming up. Yep, that's what that's I'm coming up. about. Yep. Okay. And were you able to find out the information about the uh, five-week Sunday night uh, group session? Yes, it's 349, 349. Okay, okay. Uh, so that covers all five weeks uh, and they get the training from you each Sunday. Um, and the, uh, okay, and, and there's more information at, uh, at the website, okay? Yes. And do they pay that all at one time or the installments? Just curious so people know. Um, I think it's a one-time fee, but if they want an installment program, they have to email admin at theprofitroom.com. Our guy, Kevin, takes care of all of that. Okay, so that email address is admin, admin at uh -huh. theprofitroom.com. Okay, admin at theprofitroom.com. I'm posting it here on the thread. Okay, at theprofitroom.com. Okay. Uh, okay, and Ernest, go ahead with your closing uh, remarks. <clears throat> Oh, like, just like the Toya, I mean, I appreciate being a part of this community. Um, I'm excited. We're, we're, we're a lot of content creators and we see the success in what we're doing. Uh, one of our oldest clients is 70 years old, a uh, gentleman named George that we work with. And just to see the excitement in him, the fact that he can able to do it makes us excited to sit back and be able to look at a computer and under he just wanted to know when to get out you right. know it, it just made no it meant the world to him so he's like this is the first time i ever used a stop loss now stop loss is you know making sure you don't lose your profits mm -hmm. you know just simple stuff like that even though we teach way much more that was gold to him so that's what i was saying with people a lot of stuff that we do, don't underestimate what you can actually do. We have people that are nurses, we have truck drivers, we have auto mechanics, we have doctors. It doesn't matter who you are as an individual, you can learn how to do this. And right. more important, like we mentioned last time, and I want to get some more information to, about that. You said coming up in Atlanta, that okay. you educate that we're, we're putting together this. Uh, creation for trading and investing for youth mm -hmm. we're passionate about it and mike like latoya was saying we're trying to get it together but we're going down this rabbit hole that's taking us deep and deep beyond trading and investing back to our parenting and how we're programmed and 
how we how we view money as a child or go ask your mother for this i ain't got money or right. you know go ask your dad you T-T-T know and it's children about money yeah, yeah. and how money correct and, and we just wanted to talk about trading and investing but we have to conquer that as well so right. that's why it's taking a little bit more time so you were talking about Atlanta. I mentioned last time we talked the uh, Black Homeschooling Conference in Atlanta. Is that what you were yeah, talking about? Yeah, okay. I would like to come down there just to even see how it is. Okay, you know? I'll email you the information about it. But so right. everybody knows uh, the third weekend in July, um, each year in Atlanta, they have the Liberated Minds Homeschool and Education Expo. Expo. It's a, a Black Homeschooling Conference. It's an African-centered Black Homeschooling Conference. The Liberated Minds uh, M-I-N-D-S, Black Home School and Education Expo. Visit their website, liberatedmindsexpo.com, liberatedmindsexpo.com. Um, I'm one of the presenters each year. I'll be a presenter again this year. I'm also a vendor. So they have a lot of experts in uh, homeschooling African-American children. Uh, some of them actually have homeschools. They come from across the country. Uh, you have vendors that have uh, books, curriculum, DVDs, all different types of things like this, okay, for homeschooling. And uh, and so I'll, I'll see the information as well. But people go to liberatedmindsexpo.com. They have the information there. And uh, I'll be there also uh, in Atlanta again this year as well. Okay. All right. So everybody check out theprofitroom.com, theprofitroom.com forward slash wealth building. And uh, you can uh, sign up there. You can email them also with any questions admin at theprofitroom.com, all right? Okay, guys, look, well, hey, it's been great talking to you. We'll have, I'll talk to you again soon. Uh, so y'all take care, okay? Have a good night. Good night. All right, you guys have a all right. great night. Take care. Okay, take care, guys. And then um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, wrap up with the, them and then um, everybody stay on for just a second. Okay, uh, we'll I'll wrap up with uh, Latoya and uh, uh, Ernest. Okay, and those watching, uh, stand by for a minute so I can uh, make an announcement for you all as well. Okay, so uh, a couple things. Uh, be sure to listen to the African History Network show every Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? Uh, we broadcast on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. I broadcast on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the future of radio right here in Detroit. Um, if you want to advertise with the African History Network, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So African American business owners, email us at customer service at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Our current promotion, get three months for the price of one. Okay. And uh, we promote you when we do our Facebook Live broadcast and we put those broadcasts on our YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to like this broadcast that you're watching. Follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. So click on the uh, uh, subscribe uh, button right here and turn on the, uh, click on the bell also so you know when we go live and when we upload new uh, videos, okay? Follow us on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. I broadcast there uh, as well. Uh, I'll be in Atlanta for the uh, huge Juneteenth celebration that Bob Johnson organizes in Atlanta. It's going to be June 14th through the 16th. I think the dates are this year, so I just confirmed that. Uh, so I'll, I'll be there all three days. I'll be speaking. I'm not sure which day, probably Saturday. I'll be speaking on the main stage for about 15 minutes, but uh, he also, uh, last year, he had the uh, the speakers forum uh, where they had uh, speakers uh, doing presentations. So I spoke there. So I'll probably be doing that again. And I'll have a vendor table. So uh, you'll hear more about that. We'll put that on our, our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. That's Friday, June 14th through Sunday, June 16th, the huge um, Juneteenth celebration that they do in Atlanta. So they about to have, have about 100 uh, African-American and African vendors there. Tens of thousands of people come through. Last year, the uh, uh, the main uh, performance was by Angie Stone, okay? R&B uh, artist Angie Stone performed uh, last year. So I'll be in Atlanta for that in June, 14th through the 16th. And then I'll be back in Atlanta uh, for the Black Homeschooling Conference. And uh, let me verify the date of the Black Homeschooling Conference also, because uh, I don't want to give out the wrong date. Just a second, Rated Minds 
expo.com. Let me look at that because Queen Thais is the co-founder of the expo. So she has uh, the uh, information up. Let's see, Friday, okay, the weekend of the 19th, July 19th. Okay, so let's look at that again. Uh, I'll be in there. Yeah, July, Friday, July 19th through Sunday, July 21st. I'll be back in Atlanta and it's at the Piedmont Technical Center, the Pied Piedmont Technical Center. Visit liberatedmindsexpo.com uh, for more information and to become a vendor, presenter, what have you. So I'll be back in Atlanta for that. Uh, coming up May, let's see, coming up May uh, 24th and 25th, Friday, May 24th, Saturday, May 25th in uh, Detroit, Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, African Liberation Day. I'll be there that Saturday. I'll be a vendor also. So things start, they go from about 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Visit theright.org, W-R-I-G-H-T for the uh, Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, theright.org. They have the information there on the website. We'll put it on our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Uh, that Sunday, May 26th, I'll be doing my show live the African History Network show on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation WFDF uh, in Detroit. And we also put those on audio podcasts. So visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the link on the homepage, listen to podcasts. And we have over 900 audio podcasts of the shows as well, okay? That Monday, Memorial Day, uh, May 27th, I'll be out of Inkster, Michigan for the uh, big uh, Memorial Day a parade and I'll be a vendor there that Inkster Michigan does. I'll try to get a flyer, put that on our website, africanhistorynetwork.com also, okay? You can also, if you like this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, uh, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. That helps us to finance the research, keep doing the research, pay the bills, um, stay on the air, because uh, it takes a lot to do uh, what we do at the African History Network, do these broadcasts, keep doing the research. Uh, I got to pay to travel to these places. I had to pay to travel to Atlanta, pay for lodging, all that stuff. OK, and uh, it helps finance the the our Sunday night show. Also, the African History Network show, because it takes a lot to uh, do what I do. OK, so paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Uh, or at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Click on the yellow donate button. You can set it up for a recurring donation. If you want to donate $10, 15, 25, 50, 100 or more, that definitely helps out. You can set up for a recurring donation. And also all of my DVD lectures and the online courses that I teach as well, they're at our website, africanhistorynetwork.com, africanhistorynetwork.com, okay? You can also read articles that I write. They're there also. Um, Let's see, and the, the, um, the, the 10 course online bundle pack uh, that we have, uh, that's on sale $40, regularly $130. Um, it includes, th these are all online courses that I've taught, they're all on demand, watch at your own pace. It includes a 14 hour, seven session online course that I teach called Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Uh, Kemet's one of the original names for Egypt, ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. That's a 14 hour, seven session online course that I teach is all on demand. Watch from around the world, watch at your own pace. I deal with thousands of years of history. I do a PowerPoint presentation. I have video clips, book references, references from articles also. And uh, that's one just one of the courses in the online bundle pack. Uh, also, you get um, Great African Women in History, The Mothers of Civilization. You get an online uh, class idea dealing with the film Black Panther. So it's a 10 course online bundle pack. It's on sale $40, regularly $130. That's uh, at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Also, we'll post a link here uh, as well. Let me post the link. We'll post the link here. Uh, for it also, okay? All right, so look, hey, I have to get out of here. Uh, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it corrects wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself, 
what you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself, okay? So remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.